Hello, everyone. My name is Diego. Hi, and I'm Conchita. Um, and last week, we received a comment uh, about one of um, our viewers, and we wanted to address it today. Yeah, so one of our viewers had a question about disability <laughs> identity and kind of the different aspects of disability identity and comfort levels. Yeah, and so we thought it would be a good idea to address it. I know that I personally wasn't always comfortable with my disability and my disability identity. Even I was a Paralympic swimmer, and I remember thinking um, in those spaces, like, oh, of course I'm going to be better than those people because I'm not as disabled as they are. So even in disability spaces, I think you sometimes struggle accepting one, your own disability. Or in other people's also, because there's like a right. diverse perspective on disability. Um, and I think for me, we talked a little bit about how I had a hard time accepting my disability and being comfortable with it. And um, like when someone hit on me, I was like, are you sure I have a cane? Did you miss it? Are you also blind? Um, so it, it definitely took some getting used to that like people were going to still want to date me or um, have a relationship based on kind of the ideas that I had on disability. Yeah, and I, and I think it's not like, oh, you reach that point and you're always yeah. comfortable. I think it's a, it's a constant... Yeah. Like, there are days where I feel much more comfortable with my disabilities. There are days where I don't feel as comfortable. There are places where I feel comfortable. There are places where I don't feel comfortable. And uh, you, doubt your, you doubt yourself a lot. Um, yeah. I'm not saying you, like, the general you. Right, right. <laughs> where we go somewhere, it's like, uh, you know, are people really going to be comfortable with right, my disability? Right. And you don't know how people are going to react when right. you walk into a space, come into a space, and... Some people are like overly like, oh my God, you're so amazing. How did you get here by yourself? And other right. people are like, want a thing to do with you. So I, it's always a struggle with how we have to be shifting our ideas um, about ourselves and also other people. So how do you think other communities have embraced um, disability identity? I was having a conversation with somebody who was deaf today and they said, oh, I hate the word disability. And I kind of cringed a little because I was like, wait but you're part of the disability community. Mm -hmm. And we didn't get into the whole conversation because like you were saying, I think we have to respect where mm -hmm. everyone's at. Mm -hmm. But I did kind of cringe a little. So how... Yeah, and I think that's the diversity within the disability community. Mm -hmm. Like we don't all have to think the same and be empowered the same way and want to do the same things, um, especially the deaf community and the blind community um, kind of really reject this, this labeling of disability and, and use in the same way that we use disabled, blind, and deaf. And, and there's power in that, in saying we're not a group that's the same and that we think the same. It's, it's right. diversity within the movement, and it's, and it's great that we have, you know, people that are disabled and deaf and blind, um, and we also have, um, you know, other categories as well within, within that. Um, but being able to have that diversity, I think, is a really good thing. So don't you think that that can make the disability community weaker because we're all fragmented and we all have kind of our independent identities as opposed to one collective identity? Um, I think it's what makes us diverse. So I think that's kind of a beautiful thing that we can have different identities. Like I'm Mexican and not everybody who's disabled is also Mexican. We have overlapping identities um, and similar identities. And so... Um, like deaf friends that I have, they completely support the disability rights movement and everything that it entails, but they themselves feel comfortable with using the word deaf, kind of like the word Latino, Latinx, Hispanic, right. you know, it doesn't mean we're a fractured community because there's there's really no such thing as a community. We're, we're not the same. We don't all know each other. We don't all communicate with each other. Right. Um, so it kind of brings disability into a diverse way of talking about it and living it as well. I think there are some intersections, like, for example, I have a mobility disability, cerebral palsy, and you're blind, mm -hmm. and we share some of the same mm -hmm. experiences, and mm -hmm. I think that's why we're able to have similar conversations. Yeah. They're similar but different, Yeah, you know, and there's a mixture between those. Exactly, and kind of whenever I meet somebody that's disabled or run into someone that's disabled, I'm like, yay! I'm, like, super right. giddy right. because 
I feel like there's a connection, right. whether I know them or not, or they right. have the same disability right. as me or not. I feel a connection because we have a shared experience, um, whatever that shared experience might look like. So in your mind, how can non-disabled people play a role in, in this conversation? Um, I think non-disabled people need to become educated about what disability uh, is and, and disability justice specifically. A lot of people that are not in the disability community know about a lot of social justice issues, but disability right. is one that they don't know a lot about. So I would say definitely learn about it, but also respect where everybody is at. I think a lot of times I meet like really empowered non-disabled people who tell other disabled people like, you need to be more empowered on your disability. And that is nobody's place, right. not even ours as disabled people. Um, everybody has a journey and everybody has the right to their experiences and to not love their disability. That's right. totally a right as well. And I think what we can do to sort of move this issue forward is have more intentional conversations about disability mm -hmm. and maybe ask like, how does your disability affect your identity? And then if, if somebody says, oh, it doesn't in any way, then we respect it mm -hmm. and maybe bring it up again in another mm -hmm. in another conversation, in another scenario, or connecting people with disabilities to each other. I think that could be really important because sometimes we can be very isolated. The more we talk about disability as an identity and respect where everybody is in that journey, but always talking about disability as an identity, I think it's going to advance the conversation forward. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of really awesome uh, people with disabilities that write and do blogs right. and have different intersecting identities. So right. whenever people ask me, I like redirect, like if I don't have the time or right. the energy, which is a lot, um, I redirect right. them to like, this person wrote an awesome book, this person has an awesome right. article, this person, um, you know, just spoken word. So there's so many resources right. out there. Great. Well, that was a long ass <laughs> response, but I hope we, we, we attempt to respond to your comments. Um, please leave more comments down below. And if we don't see you until the next year, Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Ciao. Bye.